A little over a month ago, it came out that Sony was not very happy with the Bungie investment, and specifically with the Sony CFO and new president, Hiroki Totoki, talking about how Bungie was going to be kind of kept on a shorter leash. They were going to make them kind of be held more accountable for their spending and their timetables. Well, now we're getting more uh, information about the inner workings of Bungie that have Sony really concerned. Hey everybody, I'm Bobby here with Direct Gaming, and today we're talking about a brand new email that went to a notable Destiny content creator, and some shakeups about Marathon that say Bungie may be in a little bit more trouble than we initially thought. But if you are brand new here, before we get into this video, we'd like to ask you to subscribe and hit that like button if you end up enjoying this video. If you don't, hit the dislike button and leave a comment down below. Let us know what we can do better in the future. So starting with this email that was sent from a supposed insider to notable Destiny content creator Aztecross, the email reads, I am writing this on a throwaway. Please use this info to corroborate other sources you may have. Internal perspective at Sony is very negative towards Bungie right now. It is seen as a failed investment and strategies being discussed as revolve around more of recouping losses. That's per the letter, not me. One internal leader from US is fighting to take over to right the ship, while many others across the Pacific want a much harsher method. The former US leader holds a lot of respect from overseas leadership, so it is likely he or she will get their way. That person's perspective is that there are many gluttonous executives at Bungie who are not doing their jobs and are hindering the organization. It is believed that the workers are skilled, but the leadership is unable to perform their duties. Bungie is in a hard spot because pre-order numbers are lower than anticipated. I apologize, I do not have the details on the actual numbers. Sony believes that the finances will not allow Bungie to avoid takeover even with another round of layoffs, as that would cannibalize development and future revenue. Overall, Sony has been very upset at Bungie leadership. They have not been able to successfully advise Sony teams, and while Lightfall hit internal revenue targets, every target since has been missed at an escalating decline. Bungie leadership regularly reschedules meetings with Sony leadership, knowing that the next time slot can be months away. I hope this sheds light for ongoings from Sony's side. It is believed that the takeover would allow Sony to turn Destiny into a more profitable game. This sounds bad, but it is being treated as lightning in a bottle. Sony leadership wants to nurture the game and understand that more aggressive monetization would not be healthy. There would be monetization model switch though, as I believe the current model is too confusing. The main difference between the US leader and the Japan leaders getting their way matters more for Bungie's in-development titles. If Japan leadership gets their way, teams for future titles will be gutted and reformed. So there's a lot to unpack here, and you know us here at Direct Gaming are fans of Destiny. Uh, Talon usually does a lot of the videos, but I think I probably have twice as many hours in the game as Talon does. And personally, uh, a lot of this stuff is not surprising, right? The Especially like seeing Sony go, hey, this looks like a really, really bad investment. Uh, kind of has been. They've missed all of their revenue targets since Lightfall, from my understanding. I mean, it just came out like last month or whenever it was that there was a 45% miss in revenue targets, which is astounding. And that's part of what led to the layoffs a few months ago. But one of the things that is not surprising here, is because it's something that we have heard over and over and over, is that leadership at Bungie is just incapable of performing their duties. And that has been something that has been very evident for a long time. Bungie has a lot of very talented developers who are very passionate about what they want to do. They've been out, especially the ones who were laid off, uh, they've been out and said, there's stuff that we want to do. We heard the community. We pitched things that the community wanted and said we want to try and do these things so that people are happy and they stay with the game and leadership told them no and that does not surprise me at all because bungie leadership since you know before destiny came out has kind of been just chaotic i mean we saw luke smith take over and he's not really a developer he's just a guy who had some world of warcraft experience which is is really strange to have that guy be the game director and then you had other game directors for different expansions come in and out and some of them were great and some of them were not great and with all this chaos around development for the entirety of destiny's history it can be very easy to go see like hey we we've said it was activision we said it was uh sony you know, the buck stops with Bungie leadership, and I think that's a big thing that needs to be taken into account. 
anyone who wants to defend the game, that's fine. But you cannot at this point in good faith defend Bungie leadership in their decisions because I guarantee you it's not the devs who are the ones saying, hey, we need to up the season pass price by $2 and then make sure they can't buy anything lower than a $15 pack of silver to pay for it. Now that has been changed because there was a huge uproar from the community, but that's something that Bungie leadership tried to get away with. And we've seen this gross monetization with Destiny 2 that is mentioned in the last paragraph of this letter uh, that the monetization being so aggressive, having to pay for season pass and dungeon pass and expansion and every little like bit of cosmetics that's even worth anything, it just gets old and people are so burnt out on the game, not evolving, but asking for more and more money every single year that I think Sony is seeing that and going, you know what? This is why people are getting burnt out. You're just, you're not delivering and you're asking for too much. And and I know that Bungie leadership, I'm sure, is trying to make sure that all of those stock and perks and things that they got from the Sony acquisition is able to fully mature before they leave. So they definitely don't want to be kicked out right now because that means like they're going to lose hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars personally. But at the same time, as a longtime fan of Bungie and especially of Destiny, like someone who's played so many thousands of hours of this franchise, I want to see it in a place where it's evolving. One of the things I always talk about as a Destiny fan is that Warframe has constantly evolved and it's been out about the same time as Destiny. And Destiny just now got the skimmer, which is super cool, but Warframe's had that for like five years now. Um, Warframe has giant epic space battles and like, you know, open world zones now, as opposed to like the, the kind of closed hallways they used to have. And they have so many different stories and, and great expansions that are all free for everybody who plays the game. And I don't mind Bungie charging for content. That's not the problem here. But if you are going to charge content, you need to be delivering more content more consistently and have it be better than a game that is not charging for content. And when we take all that into account, personally, it makes me very much in favor of Sony going in there and just cleaning house of all the management. And it's like, like I said before, everybody knows that the devs are passionate. All the devs who got laid off last year came out and said, hey, we wanted to try for you guys, but we were held back. And I guarantee you the devs, if they knew they wouldn't lose their jobs who are at Bungie now would say the exact same thing. We are told not to do this by the executives because they don't want to waste the money like for us to make these cool ideas happen for you, the player. But it totally explains why Destiny has not really had any major evolutionary shifts in the last like five or so years. Ever since Bungie went independent, they've kind of just been like, you know, stuck in this same spot with Destiny, not asking it to evolve, trying to milk the player base out of as much as they possibly can. And now they're seeing that you just can't do that forever because now people are tired of it. They're playing less and less. Me personally, I've played you know, less and less and less and less the last like two years or so, because I just am tired of feeling like they only want my money and they don't want to deliver on what a product that matches the price point that they are asking for every single year. But that's basically it with Destiny. Now let's talk about Marathon because Marathon had some really huge news. Now I personally was a person who was a fan of Chris Barrett and his work because he led development on a lot of the expansions that I absolutely loved from Destiny and Destiny 2, namely House of Wolves. He was the lead. I love that expansion in Destiny 1. Uh, that was like the first like expansion before they kind of slowed down and did them yearly. Uh, then he also did Rise of Iron, which is probably my favorite expansion of all time. And then he also did Forsaken, which is almost everybody else's favorite expansion, right? So he is like a big guy when it comes to Bungie and, and their trust in him to deliver a good product. But here's the thing. It sounds like Marathon is having trouble because it just came out today that Chris Barrett was relieved of his post. He has been replaced by Joe Ziegler, who is a former Valorant game director, and apparently Marathon is having uh, quite a bit of a shakeup when it comes to how things are going. Now, supposedly, Joe Ziegler came in about nine months ago, um, and he's been working as a game director, and, and Chris Baird has been promoted to, like, creative executive director or something. Which to me, it sounds like they're just going, hey, Chris, we're doing this OK. And he goes, yeah, right. They're basically put him in a high position where he doesn't have to interact with the game day to day. Probably because they were just like, well, we don't want to let him go. But 
we're not trusting him with this property anymore. And this comes, you know, I think last year at some point, it was like six or seven months ago, there was rumors going around that uh, Marathon had had some play tests and there weren't really any good responses to it. It came out that like everybody who played it thought, oh, this is, this is pretty boring. Right. And for an extraction shooter like like Tarkov, the reason Tarkov is so exciting is because like you never feel bored. You always feel like there's high stakes and you always feel like you're you're kind of on to something. But here's the thing is with Tarkov, that's such a very niche game type that not a lot of people want to play. I mean, you know, there's there's there are probably hundreds of thousands of people who play it, but you compare that to the millions of people who play something like Destiny because it's so casual and accessible, something more hardcore like a Tarkov, like an extraction. It's got to be set for those people and it's got to be exciting. And if those people who are going to play that type of game don't find it exciting, then your entire audience is gone and your audience is not going to be that big to begin with. Now, where is this info coming from? Well, it's coming from an IGN article by Rebecca Valentine, who is she's absolutely phenomenal at her job. She's one of those gaming journalists who's just who's actually great at her job and does journalism. Uh, parts of this go down to you know she had mentioned uh this whole thing coming out and then joe ziegler actually did come out on twitter and confirm basically her story so we did get confirmation from him over on twitter but she also continues to write that there are gonna be probably more layoffs from bungie following the release of the final shape she says while upcoming destiny 2 expansion the final shape is also being prioritized there are growing fears and rumors that layoffs will immediately follow its release one person with knowledge of budgets at bungie told me that quote nothing adds up and quote something will need to happen to curb costs unless the final shape does so well to cover the gap and people can move over to marathon end quote so we hear again that Bunchy is having that financial trouble that they've kind of been known for. I mean, they've always run way too high over their budgets. And I don't know how, because they're really not delivering huge scale things. Uh, even the most recent Into the Light live stream that happened this morning on the day I'm recording this, uh, that was just like a reused content again, which is, you know, it's kind of standard for Destiny for them to reuse maps and mission types and, and mechanics which is part of, you know, a lot of players' problems with you know, the game kind of being stale and not really evolving in the way it should. But uh, with this change, another rumor that's come out is that Marathon is now not going to be like a character customization extraction shooter. It's going to be like a hero shooter, which makes sense if Joe Ziegler's on it because Joe Ziegler made Valorant, which is another hero shooter. The problem I have with this and no offense to anyone who enjoys Valorant, Valorant is quite possibly the most anti-Bungie style thing that I could imagine when it comes to a first person shooter, right? Bungie games have always been fast, fluid, fun. You know, they're not super tactical. They're all about just getting that moment to moment feel of, of like, man, I feel great. I, I killed the enemies. I blew up the alien stronghold. Or when you're playing PVP, oh man, I hit that shot and it was crazy. I was able to jump up on a booster, right? In the old Halo games and hit that jump snipe or Destiny, right? You could slide around a corner, hit a shotgun and then roll out of the way and, and just do all this crazy stuff that the games that they make have been known for. And the Valorant style hero shooter, if that's what ends up happening, that to me spells like disaster. I do not see anyone looking at Bungie, uh, especially with Marathon having, you know, the expectations of it being an extraction shooter and then it being something like Valorant where it's a slow tactical hero shooter or even if it's faster like Overwatch. I don't see people taking to that very well when it's a Bungie product because Bungie products are all about like you being that person. And, you know, ever since like Halo 3 and all the customization you could do in there, it's been about playing like the game and, and customizing your character, especially when it's PvP. So I don't know what to say overall, uh, aside from that, this stuff about Destiny is concerning, this stuff about Marathon is extremely concerning in my opinion. And I really hope that we just, we just get new leadership. Like, I don't want anyone to get laid off, but if anyone needs to get laid off, it needs to be the leadership. They need to be let go get them out and get people who care about destiny right especially the young devs that you hear that are so excited about oh my god i get to work on destiny i was playing this game seven years ago when it came out now i'm working on it those people those are the ones who want 
helping to push the game forward and evolve the game and we want them to get into leadership instead of the leadership that's there that's super complacent and only tries to deliver minimum viable product for maximum profit return because me personally as a destiny fan someone who's absolutely loved this game for like a decade i just can't anymore with the way that they have gone with their design philosophy i get it there's limitations of the engine so change that engine there's limitations of you know what what we could do with system memory like ditch the last gen systems i get it there's still a lot of people on playstation uh, 4 a lot of people on xbox one but like for the game to move forward we need to get those out of there and all of these things need to change and the fact that the management that they have now is holding on to it and just really just crippling what the game could be it has made it a disaster for like the last year for destiny we see like those reports of them missing revenue targets that's awful and this stuff now with marathon that it's completely shifting you know the rumor that it's completely shifting trajectory going from a, an extraction shooter about character customization and cool stuff to now it's gonna be like a hero shooter and and which seems even more confirmed because now they have the former valorant game director directing the game uh that just doesn't sound good to me as a bungee fan like i was like hey marathon that could be cool if they do it right something like valorant a hero shooter competitive I, don't, I have no interest in that and i don't know many people who would um at least not who are bungee fans so i don't know what do you think about that are you a destiny fan and have you been playing as much because i in the last you know about halfway through witch queen i stopped playing as much picked up again during lightfall but it got old real quick because i was like there's not anything new here again you know um let me know. I would love to, to talk to you about it in the comments. Like, I want to know what people think about the state of destiny. Now, uh, what do you think about Marathon changing from being like a, a Tarkov style extraction shooter to a Valorant style hero shooter? You know, maybe it's arena, maybe it's not. We don't know exactly what's going on yet. If not, then it'd be like Apex, right? A battle royale hero shooter. Um, what do you think about that? Let us know down in the comments. Me and Talon would love to talk to you guys about this. Uh, we do read those comments and you know the biggest thing is mainly that bungie is is been in trouble for a while and i'm hoping for a sony takeover personally i'm not gonna buy the final shape um because if that helps accelerate getting that bungie leadership out there i know they're gonna lay off devs but i'm hoping that sony keeps the the names of those people and gets new leadership in there and brings a lot of them back because a lot of the people they lost even last year were great people who were trying to do great things for destiny um, and I would love to see Destiny have a set of great devs to make the game just as awesome as it could be for the first time. But let us know. Do you want that Sony takeover like I do? Let us know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching today. I'm Little Bobby here with Direct Gaming, and I hope to see you soon.